Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature oh, gonna oh. get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! You grab your head and give us such a bite! Livingston. Yes. What is the most successful restaurant here in the colonies? I would assume either Taco Bell or Starbucks. Taco Bell yields only 12 billion American dollars per year, putting it at number four. Starbucks is primarily a caffeine depot that would hardly constitute a proper food dispensary. However, McDonald's eclipses every other restaurant with annual sales of $46 billion per year. That's almost 37 billion quid sterling at the current exchange rate. And the spokesman and brand ambassador for this most successful company happens to be... Chris Kempinski, chief executive officer since 2019. Wrong. His name is Ronald McDonald, you silly man. And he'll be joining us here tonight. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is my lovely and cunning housemate, the gloriously coy and potentially venomous Miss Tangella. And over to this side would be Livingston, who manages the staff here in the household so that I am not compelled to do so myself. And do we have a fantabulous night of entertainment in store just for you? First off film, tonight we shall present the 1973 epic, The Horror at 37,000 Feet, starring William Shatner, Chuck Connors, Roy Thinnes, Buddy Epson, and many more. This star-studded blockbuster combines elements of the hijack movies so popular in the 70s with the demon possession fad also so prevalent in that age. Yes, I shall tell them. It also stars Russell Johnson, a.k.a. The Professor on Gilligan's Island, though his character in this film will not be fashioning parachutes out of raincoats and tree sap in this particular tale. In any case, it is a most entertaining film that you'll either completely love or utterly hate, but we think it'll be the former. Guest-wise, we'll be joined by Squire Friedel. He's an actor and has a long and storied career spanning over 40 years and has participated in over 3,400 television adverts. And yes, he even portrayed the famous clown Ronald McDonald from 1984 to 1981. He'll tell us tales about his time in front of the camera, how he finally captured the Hamburglar, and how he moved from that business to opening a winery. So don't go away for it is to be another night of mech horror with a side of fright right here on Creature Features. Oh, that's so lovely. Stay tuned. So, Squire, did you know that at 9.30 p.m. on CBS Channel 5, it's going to be Danny Kaye and Sandy Duncan doing Pinocchio? I think you're reading an old TV guide. Isn't that true? No, it says right here tonight on channels 5, 10, and 46. Ah. No, no, this sounds wonderful. It sounds more wonderful than our show. So if you tune in to our show, I think you should go. It's, it's even got Flip Wilson. There you go. Remember him? Yes. Very well. I, I thought he was dead, but no, I guess he's not. Anyways, welcome to the show. It's going to be a wonderful night. You know why? Because we've got Squire Friedel. Is that right? Friedel. That's it. And this this is a man of many faces. I mean, you've you've done things that, you know, you can talk about and maybe a few things that you cannot talk about. But one of the things you did do was Ronald McDonald. Mm -hmm. 
That's incredible. From 1984 to 1991. Yes, seven years. Seven years. Was this Just a long enough to move up to was Northern this, California. Was this a full-time gig? Uh, it was full-time along with the other gigs that I did, mostly Toyota. I was her spokesman for 29 years. So think of me with dark hair, tight skin, and a tuxedo jumping in the air for the Toyota-thon all those years. That was me. And you would jump every year for the Toyota-thon? Yeah, and many other commercials, most Procter & Gamble products. I have not yet celebrated Toyota-thon. Is it coming up soon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't do it anymore. That would be nice. And, well, hey, do you drive a Toyota? I drove one out here, yes. I got, oh, nice. I got birds attack me the entire way. I don't know why. Oh, you know, we've got a, an is issue with birds up here. I, I don't know why. No, it's just they, 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 they don't like people is all That's I it. can gather. Or Tippi yeah. Hedren. Tippi Hedren, you know, I've heard about her. She's uh, what's her face's mother, is she not? Yes. Um, what's her name? Oh, I don't know. Some, some, some woman. She's a mother. Anyways, we're going to talk uh, to you tonight about your acting career. We're going to watch uh, the horror at thirty-seven thousand feet. Have you seen this? Thirty-six thousand feet. Thirty-six, isn't it? No, it's thirty-seven. I think it's a different film. I don't know. Oh, you saw that one? I don't one. know. I don't no, know. No, no, no. This is this one's uh, a better. I have one. to watch your credits again. It's a little higher. Right, right. So. Uh, William Shatner is in this film. Whoa. Yeah. No, that's a big deal. You know why? Because this was during the time when he was no longer Captain Kirk. Mm -hmm. So, and it was before he became T.J. Hooker. So he did this gig. And it's a pretty good movie. Pretty successful career. No, well, after this, he, he was in limbo during this time. Yeah. He did a whole series. You know, he did an entire film in Esperanto. Really? It's a true story. Didn't know that. No, he did an entire film in Esperanto. But, uh, you know, I was going to ask you, Squire, how did you get such a moniker? Uh, I didn't choose it. Um, I was born, my parents named me Squire. My father was Squire. My grandfather was Squire. His father was a sheriff in Kansas. They called him the town Squire. He was oh, an illiterate so German. Where it started. And that's where it started. So you're the third. Number that's three. A, you should know. You should put that on all your cards. Squire yeah. Fredell the third. So, Squire, that's an interesting name. You know, I looked it up. It is technically someone who assists a knight, right? Mm -hmm. A squire. But and here I am assisting the knight. Uh, the the there prince of go. darkness, right? Right. No, no. But if Squire is uh, in English, I wonder if it's Esquire in Spain. I don't know. I don't right. know. Who knows? It's it was a nickname for the town sheriff in the old days. That's why they called him the town squire. Oh, is that? Yeah. Uh, you know, it sounds like crier. Sounds like Cryer. That's right. me too. The town Cryer. On cue. I don't see you crying. On Anyways, cue. we got a, many, many things to discuss with you, but first we've got to start this film. So uh, we're going to come back after the break, and then uh, we're going to catch up with you. We're going to catch up with you, and then uh, I'm just going to sit here and make faces at the camera. Can I get some popcorn, please? Popcorn, a soda? Livingston will do it. See you soon. Attention, please. AOA Flight 19X London to New York will be slightly delayed. Passengers are advised to check in baggage and await further announcements. Attention, s'il vous plaît. Vol AOA numéro 19X à destination de New York sera retardé de quelques minutes. Les passagers sont avisés d'enregistrer leur bagage et d'attendre notre prochain avis. Oh, come on, dude, there's no mystery about it. It's a Selsun motor, not a human female. I'll pull it, check it, and see what's wrong. It's an instrument. It won't lie to you. AOA Flight 19X for New York is now open for boarding at 8.12. Please have boarding passes and all travel documents ready for passport control. All right, Mr. Holcomb. You're all set to go, sir. You'll be departing from Lounge 4. Thank you. Flight 19X. What's his X rating, partner? Spot of luck for you, sir, actually. It's an extra flight. You'll have the bird practically to yourself this trip. Yep, I surely would like that. Let me help you with that, ma'am. Uh, no, thank you. I can manage. Hello, I'm Sheila O'Neill. Has my husband checked in yet? That he has, Mrs. O'Neill. He just went to the cargo office. Oh, fine. Half a sec while I get my passport out. We'll take care of that for you, sir. Not to worry. Thank you. It's a 
lot of fuel for such a light passenger list. Are we expecting a hurricane? You're pretty heavy on cargo. What's your manifest? Architectural features, 11,000 pounds. What the devil could that be? In this case, part of an abbey. What? I kid you not. The guy shipping it told me. Name's O'Neill. In fact, he's aboard your flight. It's a chapel room from some old English abbey. Even an altar. And he's going to set it up in a place he's building on Long Island. Final call for AOE flight 19X to New York, boarding at gate 12. Attention, s'il vous plaît. Dernier appel du pôle à voie numéro 19 Expo New York. Now you're sure? You're sure I'm on the extra flight, the cargo flight? It's all taken care of, Mrs. Pinder. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Pinder, would you please leave the door key here? Damon, he's coming with me. In the hold, madam. Now, don't worry. It's very comfy down there, and he'll enjoy it. But you have very few passengers on this flight. Please, can't he come with me? Regulations, madam. You understand, don't you, Damon? I have to. Hmm. But I'll hold you personally responsible for his safety. Thanks. Well, Mr. O'Neill, your wife went on ahead. She should be on board by Good. now. Now, that lady who was just here, uh, is she on our flight? Mrs. Pinder? Yes. Yes. Do you know her? <laughs> yes. Oh. Unfortunately. Mm. Hey! You ready for this? Ten passengers. And nine stewardesses? No, just the two of us. Come on up front, hon. Jenkins says they all go first cabin, okay? Control, one niner x ray. Say, what is with the weather? No change, one niner. Surface wind northeast, six knots. Are you kidding? We've just been hit in the face by some of the North Pole. You say again, one niner? Thank you, one niner. I think we just had a lesson on the famous not to be believed English summer weather. Please. Final call for 
Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That's quite all right. Good heavens. That's flight 19X. That's boarding right now, sir. Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Seat belts, no smoking, flight attendants. Check, check, check. You just made it. Yes, of course. Oh, any seat, just any seat back there. Thank you very much. Here. Let's get the show on the road. Place the mask over your face and breathe normally until you are advised it is not necessary. Now, in accordance with federal safety regulations, the cabin stewardess will demonstrate the use of the life jackets, which are located under the seats. V1. Rotate. V2 plus 10. AOA 19 X ray. You are clear to New York via Shannock Direct. Then J3, Bravo route. Climb and maintain flight level 370. Squawk code 2100. Departure frequency will be 124.1. Over. Roger, AOA 19X3 is clear to New York via Sandwick Direct J3 Bravo. Route maintain flight level 370, squawk 2100, departure 124.1. Roger, 19X3. Clearance correct. Have a nice trip. Tell me, Squire Friedel, famous actor, would you get on a plane with an 11,000-pound druid altar? It'd be difficult to get on a plane with a druid anyway because they're all gone. But that's all, it's probably but one no, of the no. rocks from Stonehenge. Stonehenge, probably, exactly. Yeah, that's no. where the druids built. They used to build things very... Yeah. How did they load it on the plane? That's a tough one. You know, I, I, think, I think, you know, they, they leave that information That's not carry-on luggage. No, no. I can imagine that plane that has the rear end that opens up would be much more accommodating to something like this. But no, it's a commercial flight, so who knows. <laughs> Anyways, William Shatner is in charge, so we're going to find out what really happens. In any case, um, you know, I was looking at your resume, and you were in Village of the Damned. Yes, yeah, John Carpenter up here. We shot it up here. That's wonderful. Yeah. Nicasio. Nicasio, I That's think. That's not far from here at all. That's no. like uh, 14 miles no. from here. And it was fun because I got to play a rough and burly sheriff. I usually was cast in the old days when I used to work a lot. This was sort of the tail end of my acting career that uh, I was asked to do, the, to do it because I'd worked with his wife, I think, somewhere along mm -hmm. the line. And uh, so I got to play the rough and burly sheriff. But I, the reason I took the role is because I got to get machine gunned at the end. And for a white bread actor... Um, I never get to play villains or cowboys or anything like that. Always doctors and lawyers and things like that. Right. I got to get machine gun as the sheriff. And it was great because I was in the, uh, we were there all night long shooting. It was a night shoot. And uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the guy that was rigging me, the effects guy, for all of the shots because they squibs. put these little plates on you, squibs with blood, which is actually chocolate syrup. And I went in and I said, he was hooking up all of these squibs to me with electric wires coming out. So when I jump out of my patrol car, uh, I hold up my gun and I say, hold it right there or some 
um, miraculous line. And uh, all of a sudden, I just get machine gun. So I said to him, where do I get shot first? Thinking, good question. Method actor, right? Uh, that if I get shot in this shoulder, I go like that, and right. then like this, and no, oh, you need to good. know. And he looked at me and he said, "What?" And I said, I "Thought maybe he didn't speak English." Where do I get shot first? Right. And he said, "It doesn't." And all of a sudden, I hear, "Where's that? Uh, Squire, Fred Allen set." So I run out, and I we, we, we don't have time to rehearse this because they're running behind, and right. the people in Nicasio are upset because the lights are on all night long. And, uh, and I, I said, I, so I said to John Carpenter, I said, where do you think I get shot first? And he said, just get in the car, because they're running behind, and then race down, jump out of the car, pull out your gun, say your line, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll take care of the rest. Yeah, that, that was a legitimate question, because if you're going to do the, I'm being shot by a machine gun dance. There you go. You know, there's certain, like, moves that, you know, So, in reality... Yeah. I get in my car, there's no time to rehearse. I do it, I hit my marks, I'm good at that. I jump out of the car, I yell my line because I'm good at that, I pull out my gun, and all of a sudden, my chest explodes. They all went off at the same time, oh my goodness. and I'm thrown back about six feet, and I'm lying on my back, dazed, because that hurts. And the guy that was hooking up all the stuff was standing over me when I, when I opened my eyes, and he said, you see what I mean? It really didn't oh make any difference. Goodness, that's so, incredible. That's the only time I've been shot on camera. So that. So was how good. did the scene look? I have not seen this movie in I, ages. I have. I don't remember. All right, I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say we get back to this film, and then when we come back, uh, we're going to find out some more of your sordid tales. No more. No more gun episodes. All right. Off we go to the horror at thirty-seven thousand feet. We'll be back after the break. You know, I think maybe I'm going to put some black stone on the floor here around the altar. Very nice if you're planning to use it for a bar. <laughs> That's a little nasty, isn't it, dear? Yes, I suppose it is. I guess I'm just bloody tired of the whole business. It's your ancestral chapel we're riding on, darling. It's over $100 a mile. You can afford it, Alan. It's fortunate I can afford to save something ancient and beautiful when your family estates are becoming condominiums and parking lots. Well, maybe that isn't all bad. You really want to quarrel, don't you? I, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm just a little edgy tonight. Here you go. Oh, thank you kindly. So haven't I heard of you somewhere, Mr. Holcomb? Gee, honey, my business manager would be disappointed if you hadn't. I've been starring in the Western in Italy. My last one, Rimrock, made 15 mil. No, I think I must have confused you with someone else. Mr. O'Neill? I thought it only fair to warn you that I'm on board. Miss Pinder, I thought we had all this out in English court. And I came prepared to try it again in an American court. Mrs. O'Neill, I cannot believe that you would acquiesce in the uprooting of these priceless relics. Please, leave me out of it. Sacrilege. Sacrilege. I hardly regard it as that. You really don't know what's down in that hole, do you? I'm sorry, Mrs. Pinder, but this forward section is reserved for first-class passengers. You'll regret it. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Murray. Yeah, sorry. I hope that part of it was over. That's a cause for every crank these days. But if I'm going to be attacked by a lady crusader, I need a drink. Come on. Thanks, I'll stay here. You know, you're really a barrel of laughs tonight. I imagine you'll find somebody in the bar who is. Alan, I'm sorry.
cool? Why don't you cool it, huh? Okay. I don't care. You know, this sounds a little off. Naturally. The closer to heaven, the more discordant. Oh, man, why don't you just put me on your back and walk us across the water? There was a time. Now I'd sink. Sir, you know that's against the rules? I'll tell you something. I'm bored with rules. Everything okay, Mom? Well, my little girl's just a teeny bit nervous. But I'm sure when she's asleep. It's okay, Annie. I'll tell the captain. No more bumps tonight. What do you see, Frank? Clear all round, negative on buildup. Beats me what that one could have been. Seatbelts, Captain? Now save them. They pay to walk around this flying hotel. Let's let them live a little. Cornwall 2-6. Hmm. It's three minutes late. Must be a headwind building they didn't tell us about. Something wrong, ma'am? Oh, it's just this gadget. Likely just the phones. Let's try some others. Oh, no, please don't. My bother. pleasure. My name's Steve. Believe yours is Sheila, am yes, I right? Yes, but... Well, uh... excuse me, Sheila. Let's get this out of the way here. Now, I'll put these in. Here we go. Right as rain. If that ain't Dave Brubeck, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That ain't Brubeck. Dog. Gone if I don't owe you a drink. I'll think about it, Pard. Maybe later. You got a deal. <laughs> How does it read on your side? Miles from Cornwall Center, 2 4. Correction. On mine now at 2.5. Well, same here, so I guess they must be working all right. Airspeed, I read 6.30. Ditto. Gyros check five. So what do you make it? Impossible. From that last VOR, we're covering ground about like a lady bicycle rider. We must be bucking a headwind of 620 miles an hour. There's no such wind. That's right, there's no such wind. So what are we doing right smack in it? Center AOA 19 X ray at assigned altitude 370. We got a small problem. Roger AOA 19 X ray. We see it. Thought we'd fouled up here on your position. We haven't changed position in 10 minutes. Problem seems to be a jet stream. Dead on, like at 600 plus. 600, come again. We show winds aloft your vicinity westerly at 70 knots. Cornwall Center, I'm going to maintain my heading for two minutes more. Not out of it then. Request clearance for 180 back to London. Put that in the works, huh? Let me ask you something. Do you think we should let our first class tourist upstairs? I don't know. I've got one who's packing a flask. Oh, no. Karate time. 
Yeah, it feels funny tonight. It feels very funny. Hey, lay off that, will you? You know how I hate flying. Coming up two minutes. Mark. Cornwall Center, one niner. X ray, how am I for that turn? You are cleared, one niner. Thank you, Cornwall. Starting one eight zero turn in one minute. Here you are, Mr. Farley. <sighs> You're the fellow who booked this flight, huh? No, it's just the cargo hold. Must have cost you plenty. They charge by the pound for this kind of freight? I don't remember. My people set it up. If you have to ask, we can't afford it, right? Glenn Farley. Alan O'Neill. We never met, but uh, I know you. You gave me a bid on a hotel I built down in Orlando. You were too high on that. I didn't hire you. That's how I made seven million dollars in the last three years. And I'll tell you, I'd know how much this airplane was costing me to the cent. Well, I'm an architect, not a businessman. You're telling me. The stuff you're shipping, uh, I heard the woman downstairs giving it to you. What is it, part of a church? Yeah, the remains of an old abbey. It's been my wife's family for centuries. We met a little resistance when we took it. Gotta pay you to haul it away. Can it pay us? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Friedel was asked to step away for a moment, but for a good reason. Look, look what we've got. It's Fang. A dog with a wig. No, but no, he is Ronald McDoggle. Oh, dear. No, and he, he, he dispenses tiny hamburgers. To whom? To whoever wants a tiny hamburger. Isn't he glorious? And how does he go about that? Oh, my goodness. He has to question everything. Just enjoy it. The dog did Halloween for us tonight. Anyways, uh, we're going to do some mail because uh, it's sent to us. And if, if we don't read it, it's silly, right? Quite. All right. How about some mail, Mr. Livingston? Wichita Falls, Texas. Wichita Falls, Texas. That sounds like a nice place. Kelly Span. Do you think it's a, a guy, Skelly, Kelly, or a girl, Kelly? We'll find out. It's very nice handwriting. So I would say a woman. Right, but you never know. Uh, hello, Vincent Tangella and Mr. Livingston. I just found your show a few months ago, and I'm absolutely obsessed and addicted to the show. Well, that's not good. No. No, I mean, she should be addicted to something like socks. I think it's hyperbole. No, no, no. I, but uh, this, uh, this is, this is, this is, this is could be terrible. I mean, what if she does nothing else? Listen to this. I watch two to three shows a night. I subscribed immediately because Mr. Livingston said he would be very disappointed in me if I didn't. You know, this is all your fault. Evidently. It's, it's always his fault for some reason. I didn't want that. I love your viewer mail segment and your intros are the best. Love your hand gesture when you say stay tuned. Do I do a hand gesture when I stay, stay, stay tuned? And how? Well, I mean, I suppose I could like not do stay, stay tuned and just do the hand gesture, right? Be yourself. All right, all right. 
Uh, love your guests, whether you have them or not. My favorite movies are from the 50s through the 70s, good or bad. I used to watch Svengooli because it's the only show that shows old movies like this on TV. Your show is all I watch now. Thanks to you and your crew for bringing fun and enjoyment back to us all. A fan for life, Kelly Span, which to false. That's uh, wonderful. No, I, I think it's okay that this person is addicted to our show. Could be worse. I mean, they could be addicted to like, you know, spaghetti or something like that. And that's not, that's not very healthy, right? No. Next up, Mr. Livingston. How's the doggy doing? He looks tired. This he appears to be from Texas as well. Texas as well. You know, we've got a lot of views. It's a postcard. And it shows a barbecue. I'll put a big one up. And this is from Bill. And the place is called The Gas Station in Bastrop, Texas. And he goes, I've been watching since the public domain days. When was that? I have no idea. Neither do I. Uh, I enjoy how much you've grown and how the selection of movies have grown. I may be the only one, but I think the made-for-TV movies are great. Thank you, Bill. So uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, is tonight, tonight's is a made-for-TV movie as well, right? I believe so. Right. No. So it's true. I mean, and you know, I think why they did this is because there was a lot of actors that were out of work. They couldn't get in a movie, but they put them on TV movies, and there you go. I don't know. I'm not a pro on these things. I think you should be, but you're not at the moment, right? I'm researching this. All right. Next up. Oh, a big package. This is from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And this is from Design Revolution. I think there's a letter inside. I would hope there's a letter inside because this is a large... Oh, this looks nice. All right, let's read this. And uh, I think I'm going to play Vanna White tonight because you've got a dog. Look, look at how sad his face. I don't think he wants to betray Ronald McDonald anymore. I don't think he cares for the wig. Oh, I, some people don't care for the wig. I don't either. Uh, all right, so this is from uh, El Gato Gomez. What a wonderful name. The cat. El Gato Gomez. Right, and uh, I assume it's uh, a guy, Elgato. What would a it cat. Be? Right, but if it was a female cat, it would be something else, right? Elgato. Right, Elgato. See, there you go. Dear Vincent Livingston and Tangela, I am an artist based in Pittsburgh, and I have a deep affection for all things creepy and kitschy. I love watching your show on YouTube while I work. The movies are fun, and your guests are always interesting and weird. Well, I will say Squire is interesting. I, I'm not entirely sure he's weird, though. He hasn't done anything weird yet, right? Not yet. Maybe we'll get lucky. And uh, thanks so much for keeping the tradition of horror hosting alive. I'm sending you a print of a painting I did to honor your show. It is based on vintage movie monster model kits. It is from a series I am working on about horror hosts and spooky movies past and present. Much love and spookiness, Elgato Gomez. And that's his email. Wonderful. All right, let's take a look what he made. This looks interesting. Oh, ooh. Oh, my goodness. This is fantastic. Look at this. Impressive. Isn't that great? Look at this. Isn't that nice? So uh, we'll put a big one up, but here it is with reflections. And uh, it is uh, Tangella sitting in a chair watching the TV while you and I are in portraits. Well, that's interesting. And there's a pink octopi. Of course. It's very nice. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Elgato, and we hope things are going well in Pittsburgh. And is that it for mail? That's it. All right. Well, if you'd like to send us a letter of your own or a package, visit hellocreaturefeatures.com, and that'll have all the instructions for you to send us a postal message or a email message, or if you'd like to transfer large sums of cash to our facility, that works as well. We'll be back uh, soon after the next break, but uh, first let's get back to the horror of 37,000 feet. Hold your hats and watch the miles go by. We've got a 600 plus tailwind now. Let's see, we ought to knock off a ground mile in about uh, three seconds. We're not moving. We've got a 600 mile tailwind and we're not moving. 
Quinwall Center. AOA one night or X-ray. Confirmed squawk setting at Alpha 2100. We have your blip one niner. What the devil are you doing up there? Flying in circles, your position unchanged. Cornwall Center, stand by, one niner. What's up? We're caught in a wind like none there ever was. We've done a full turnaround and it's still smacking our teeth somehow. Cornwall Center. AOA. One niner X-ray. We'd like a right turn to zero nine zero and permission to descend to two six zero. That's funny. The lights aren't moving. What? Peculiar, ugly illusion, motionless, suspended. I run, I get nowhere. Did you know this happens to be the summer solstice, midsummer's eve? Is that good or bad? It depends. If you're a witch, it's a night for bonfires, incantation. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> Beautiful moon tonight, huh? That's the fifth turn I counted. What's going on? Well, I don't think there's any problem. I fly my own plane, sweetheart. A custom jet. They keep changing altitude and power set. Now be a good girl and go find out what's happening. Tell me, are you a very good architect, Mr. O'Neill? I'm a very successful architect. Is that the same thing? Mm. I used to think so. You tell me now, are you a very good model? How did you know I was a model? That's an easy one. The way you dress, choice of drinks, magazine, the whole package. Touche. What's going on in here? Anything we should know? Look, and don't panic. We've just got a, a little bit of a problem. Like what? Uh, it seems as if we're caught up in this crazy kind of a jet stream. It's as, as if we're hung up here on a hook. What does that mean? Okay, we'll talk later. You were right, Mr. Farley. There is a slight problem, but nothing we can't handle. I'll let you know as soon as I can. Well... Well, I'm not gonna try and figure it out. It can't happen, but it has. Wind or whatever it is is affecting this plane only. Just us. I don't get it. It's like being in a, in a whirlpool. We can't move in any direction. Six hours and 20 minutes of fuel left. We're burning it up. Let's reduce to 200. We're not going anyplace anyhow. Let Margo know what's happening and tell her to break out more drinks for the passengers. All they want. Okay.
She's sick. She was pale and trembling. I'll get a cold cloth. Excuse me, please. I'm a medical doctor, doctor in color. Ore, igne, sancti, spiritus, cassita, non cavita, spiritum, palibeth. Latin, is it not? Yes, yes. Is it serious? No, merely an hysterical episode of some sort. Perhaps what would help her most is some food. Or am I speaking only of myself? Oh, my, you're right. We really are running behind. Is it all right that I go? Yes, of course. Okay. I should like the lady's husband present when she returns to consciousness. If you'd be so kind as to look after her. Yes, of course. Yes. She's a beautiful woman, isn't she? Or are you just working on a get well prayer, Paul? <laughs> I was just thinking I might become a doctor. Why? Why not? I can be anything I want now. And they have such power over women. It's that uh, paternal thing. Except doctors are free to use it. What's the matter? You don't look well yourself. I'm just sick from watching you bleed. <sighs> what happened to me? What did I do? Nothing, you just fainted, that's all. There's a doctor on board. He says you're all right, there's nothing serious. <sighs> I'm sorry to be such a bloody nuisance. Not at all. Uh, Gives me something else to do besides get drunk. <laughs> I'm Paul Kovalik. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Kovalik. I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, has anyone told my husband? Yes, the doctor went for him. D did you know that you were speaking Latin? Oh, that's impossible. I I've never studied Latin. Sorry to spoil your good time. Oh, come on. Get off it, will you? I've never known you to faint from lack of attention. I've never fainted, period. Sir, if I were you, I should not leave her alone tonight. I don't intend to. Not that it's any of your concern. Alan, please. Excuse me. I presumed. Uh.
So, uh, Squire, uh, you have a fantastic head of hair. You know, I have a suggestion. If you got it colored dark like mine. I did for a long time, you actually. Did. Yeah. No, you could. Doing you could, Toyota for 29 years, you always had to look the same. But you could fill in for me here. This is a good point. I'm ready. Right? I'm no, ready. you could interview these people, I'm and I can. I still can, got my SAG card. We're, I, we're okay to go. I don't need that here. We're, we're low budget. We're low budget. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to the show. We are watching the horror at 37,000 feet. With, frightening. It frightening. is? Frightening. Absolutely frightening. frightening. With Squire Friedel and uh, the elephant in the room. You were Ronald McDonald. I was. I was the second Ronald McDonald. I, I, uh, my predecessor was a fellow named King Moody. King Moody? Yeah, he was uh, in Get Smart. The series. He was one of the chaos oh, agents. He was right, a, right. a comedy actor. He so was, he did it first, and then you came in and, and did it better. Out. I assume. No, no, no. I just I looked a lot like him, but oh, I was, I was younger. He'd done it for a long time. Oh, all right. And uh, the great thing about McDonald's, if I can digress, is that I was working a lot, and we lived on the beach in Southern California. My right. wife and I had a little baby, and uh, I got home from doing a job one day, watching the sun go down over Catalina Island. L.A. smog makes beautiful sunsets. Look down on the beach, and there are a bunch of 14-year-old kids having a good time, but they were smoking dope and drinking beer and being a little rowdy. I looked at my wife and thought that maybe this wasn't the best place to raise a, a little baby girl right, right. Uh, on the beach. And so I thought maybe we can move. It's a long story, and I won't go into it, but uh, my dad lived up in Santa Rosa, and we would always come up and visit him and go wine tasting. I didn't know much about wine, but I liked it a lot, so did my wife. And uh, lo and behold... During a visit, we bumped into 26 acres in the middle of nowhere in Glen Ellen. Walked around, got poison oak and ticks, and thought, this is cool, let's get it. So we got it. Wow. Started to build a cottage, lived there for a year where the big house was being built. Right. But in order to do that, during construction of the cottage, we went back down south, and I woke up bolt upright in the middle of the night, awakened my wife and said, what are we doing? I can't move. I'm an actor. There's only two places in the United States I can live and really make a good living, and one of them isn't Glen Ellen, California. What right. can I do? I thought, well, I'm really good at doing TV commercials. I've done more than, I think, anybody else. 3,400 on-camera television commercials. I had I've a contract. I've seen every single one of them. I have seen every one. I was in every one. I, and I had a contract with Toyota, which lasted 29 years, but I didn't know it was going to last that long. So I thought, if I can get one more commercial product, maybe we can make this thing last. But it has to be a contract. I figured seven years, I could get over the hump. And so I auditioned for everything. Became Procter & Gamble products, almost every product you can name. My goodness. And then, lo and behold, the guy who was the original Ronald McDonald was retiring. So I, along with 4,000 other guys in New York, Chicago, and L.A. auditioned, I got the job. So the day that I signed the contract is the day we put our house on the market Fantastic. and physically began to move up. So Nature were you able to do that well. up here? Yes, I traveled. I just traveled you would down, just to, go down, mostly to down to L.A. Okay. They shot at Raleigh Studios down in right. L.A. Right. Incredible. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. I want to hear more about this story, but we're going to get back to this film because uh, this was William Shatner's worst film. That's what he said. No, that's what his I fans said. I liked it a lot. No, that's what his fans film. said. So I, I want to see what part makes it the worst. Anyway, so uh, you stick around, and uh, you guys, we're going to get back to the film. Don't go away. We'll be back soon. Bye. You heard it, I tell you. Someone cried for help. Margo. Oh, yeah, let me at that thing, miss. Here, try this. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'll give it an assist here. He does. There's an emergency door on top. Can you get it open? Yeah, sure enough. Thank God. No, it's cold down there. Come on up. Come on up, honey. Walk your hand, yeah? Come on. There you are. Easy, that's it. Are you all right? Oh, you're freezing. I know. There's really nothing to worry about, folks. It's just your run-of-the-mill airplane elevator accident. Blowout in the cargo hold. Blowout? It's freezing, and there's a wind. Hold it. Negative on that. What? Negative. I tell you, there's ice down there. I saw it. There's a wind howling. No way, baby. We did have a blowout. You'd know it in zero flat. Then where did the ice come from? The wind? Are you saying it came from inside the plane? But I heard 
hit something. And then the elevator went out and... Go down and take a look. I'll be right there. Bonnie, you pull yourself together. I'm going to need you. Sheila. My turn to say sorry. Come on, what is it? What's the matter? Helen, I'm frightened. I think I may be... I, I keep hearing strange things. Voices. Some kind of chanting I can't understand. And then... They call to me sometimes over and over. You've been under a lot of stress. It's my fault, I guess. You do believe me, don't you? I mean, you... You don't think I'm ill. I don't know what to think. Howdy, Captain. What's up? Not leaving us, are you? Yeah. We're going to take a bus and leave the driver to you. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill? Yes. You don't have any in that shipment of yours we don't know about, do you? What do you mean? Well, I don't know yet. You don't have anything uh, live. Well, of course not. Why? Just curious about a little problem we have down there. Sorry. Captain? Um, is there anything wrong? No, miss. Nothing serious. Captain, if you're going below, would you be kind enough to speak to my dog? His name is Damon. You know how to reassure him? Of course. Well, Jim? All right, I've got it open. Look at this. Something like moss on the bulkhead. Hey.
stewardess. has been killed. Jim's dead. What? Something in the cargo hold killed him. We don't know what. Oh, is the captain going to be OK? As far as his physical wound is concerned, yes. As for the rest, I'm not sure. Hi, Vincent. My name is Belinda, and I discovered your show last night uh, looking at the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker was one of my favorite shows when I was a child. I just love your show uh, already. I look forward to uh, looking at it more. So thank you and have a great day. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, you're silly, but uh, you've been missing our conversation with this bloke, which happens to be sitting right here. This is the classic Ronald McDonald. It was. And this, you tell me, is your little girl. That was our daughter. We have one child, and she was about four years old. She'd seen me on TV, of course. I was the only Ronald. People right. often mistake, are there many Ronalds? There was one Ronald on TV. Right. There were 150 of them around the United States that did all the store openings and the hospitals and right, things like that. Right, of course. I just did the TV ads. Those were stunt doubles. Uh, no, no, they were, they were clowns. They were really clowns. I wasn't a clown. Right. I could just hit my marks and I could sing a little bit. So did you do a different voice? No, still my voice. Good time, great taste. That's why this is our place. The good time, great taste of McDonald's. I used to do in Spanish. Cantore una canción y aparecerán los famosos McDonald's fry guys. Ballad and rock and roll y todos en español. I have no idea what I said. Being, being Ronald McDonald is a complicated business, is it not? This is fantastic. So, I have to ask, the other characters, you had uh, the Hamburglar uh -huh. in Grimace. A fellow named Frankie Delfino. Was the Hamburglar. Was the Hamburglar. He sounds like a mobster. Uh, he, he was a, a little tiny fellow, but he was just a delight. Uh, right. He was in his 70s when he played that character. It was not no. his voice. 70s? In 70s. A, in a costume like that? Yeah. That doesn't seem... Great like... tolerance level. I remember we had some people come on the set, and of course I could never take my wig off. That would destroy the illusion, right. even for guests. But someone came on, and, they, and I introduced them to Frankie. And uh, he had his hat off, because his head. And, uh, and I said, this is Frankie Delfino. And Frankie, hi! He had his funny little voice. And, uh, and I say, you know, Frankie was in The Wizard of Oz. Oh, my goodness. And Frankie would go, oh, yeah, wait me. And I'd say, the silent version. And Frankie, God damn it, God squire, you can't do it. Oh he chased goodness. me around. He was a frenetic, frenetic little fella. Oh, that's but he was hilarious. just a delight. We, and he was an actual tiny person. He was person. a small person, yeah. Right, right, right. I don't know what you can How call incredible. him these days. So uh, the, uh, the bird, there was some kind of bird. Birdie, creature. that was bird. a gal named... Uh, uh, Patty Maloney, we right. still correspond. She lives nice. in Florida. 
Right. And she was a delight. They introduced that character while so I was doing So was Raul. this orchestrated by like Hanna-Barbera or like Jim No, Henson? it was I mean, all orchestrated by the, the ad agency. I never really worked for McDonald's. I worked for Leo Burnett, which was the ad agency. And that's who you're in contact with when you do commercials. Right, but the, the actual production itself looks like a Hanna-Barbera. Well, it's that same sort of cartoon feel. Right, right. They had a, a stage at Raleigh Studios where they would, um, it was a McDonald's stage, and they would simply redo if it was McDonald land. We rarely shot uh -huh. real commercials right. in a store, but they had a mock store up in the city of industry if I had to do that. And so how often would you be doing these commercials? Um, maybe... Um, once a month, I would fly down and shoot a, a few of them. How fun. Yeah, most of the traveling was for Toyota. That was the big one. Right. And I was all over the country for 29 years. And just for jumping up in the air? Uh, not just jumping up in the air, talking. It was a oh, spokesman. Oh, so you do the pitch as well? It was a spokesman, yeah. Right, right. How wonderful. Well, it's a nice call. Yeah. You, a nice man for a nice call. Anyways, I'm going to signal we got to get back to this film, but uh, when we come back, I want to talk about this book of yours. Okay. You wrote this okay. book on acting. I want to hear more. Let's get back to the film. I'm back to I'm the film. This. It's it's getting I think I did deadly. the voice in one of the screams in here. That would the be size good. and the screams, it could be. You never know. It Let's sounded see. like me. Well, maybe we'll Hopefully watch. Be, maybe we'll hear it when, be as residual we watch. residual somewhere along. All right. Here we go. Right back to the horror at 37,000 feet. We'll see you on the other side of the break. There's something going on. I want to know what. That elevator still stuck? It's the flight engineer. He's dead. What? Something awful's happened back there. Oh, uh, here, try this. Uh oh. Look at that. <gasps> Is it? Mr. Farley. Mr. Farley, you can't come Where's in here. Where's the nearest field handle this baby? You the gotta get it down and quit. Won't don't play games with me, honey. Regulations don't count now. Your flight engineer is dead, your captain's hurt, and there's something happening to this airplane. I wanna know what you're doing about it. What's the matter with you? Some kind of a blowout in a hole. You're doing nothing about it. There's no blowout. It would show on my instruments. I don't give a damn about your instruments. Do something. You're the one that's going to do something, Farley. Get out of here. No. Doc, what's happened to me? What is sometimes known as shock. You call this shock? That is somewhat more difficult. Your arm has been frozen to the point of being burned. Can you understand that? I mean, wait, suppose the instruments were wrong. I mean, if there was a blowout, the loss of oxygen, it could have caused hallucinations. Well, respectfully, Captain, your arm is not a generalized condition. It could not relate simply to the absence of oxygen. It's more specific as though something incredibly cold had touched you there. I'll get my bag. Frank? Try Cornwall. I'll use the radios out. What about the backups? They're out too. Excuse me, what's happening back here? You ain't heard? This is a little trouble with the plane. You do know, Mr. O'Neill. You know very well. Those things which this man has taken, removed from the soil where they have rested for thousands of years. Oh, lady, whatever are you talking about? They are sacred things. They have their own powers. That is what is happening to us. Oh, come on, I'm not gonna listen to this. Paul. Do you know what she's talking about? The Droata, Mrs. Pinder. Of course, the Druids. Believe it or not, here we are in the last half of the 20th century under these circumstances. And what are we worrying about? 
the grotesque practices of a primitive cult that was stamped out before the coming of Christ. Not, not entirely, Mr. Kovalik. There are still druids. Oh, yes, of course there are. And there are still witches and Satanists. And those who believe the Jimson weed can make them immortal. There's never been any shortage of idiot things to believe in, or idiots to take them Stop up. Stop it! What have druids got to do with what's going on here? Everyone on that heath knows the legend. They've faded for hundreds of years. Inside the altar at Grove Abbey was a druid sacrificial stone. That stone is on this plane. Hey, lady, you trying to tell me that a, 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 a piece of rock's got something to do with killing the flight engineer? The abbey was built on the sacred grove of the druids, a place where they committed human sacrifices to the ancient gods of darkness, cold wind. The old ones, they call them. And every hundred years, at the summer solstice, they still... It's summer's eve. Paul, you said that was tonight. For all I know, it's Halloween. How do you know all this stuff, anyway? Well, if it's any of your business, I like to look at ruins. Preferably religious ruins. Why don't you just knock it off? Confession is supposed to be good for the soul, isn't it? Paul Anya. is a priest! Was. Very definitely was. They have enough trouble without sticking them with me. Okay. Okay, so he, he struck out as a priest. So what? What's that got to do with us? With all this crazy business. This lady's talking about demons and spirits and stuff on this airplane. Well, I'd sure like to get some answers and right quick. Perhaps you are too eager for answers. Sometimes there are none. The only magic I know is that man can resist gravity and fly at 37,000 feet. I hope that makes you happy. It hasn't me. What would? I'm going to open a bottle of it right now. <laughs> it might not make me happy. But it will amuse me to think of all of you back here worrying about your lives as though they were of some importance. He doesn't matter. We have to find out what it wants. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's back there. So let's get everybody up front away from it. Oh, miss! Nobody goes back there until this whole thing is cleared up. You understand? Nobody! Is everybody here? Where's the little girl? Everything you run up front now, okay? Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you.
You punch like a girl. Ow, ow. Structural break. It's inside the plane. I understand we're stuck up here. You ought to demand your money back. Wish I could find something funny in all this. Stick around. Maybe you will. Are you beyond fear, or are you just drunk? <laughs> Both. But if I were you, I'd worry more about your fellow passengers than whatever it is you brought on board. Come on. Oh. Sheila? No. No! Sheila, what is it? You're hearing something, aren't you? Uh -huh. My wife has been hearing voices, but she was treated for nervous exhaustion a few weeks ago. What do you hear? I don't know voices. They keep calling my name. It stopped. Do you remember what you said when... when you fainted? Ore igne sancti spiritus. Yes, I heard that. One of the voices. What does it mean? Well, do you know her, don't you? It's from a black mass. A prayer to the devil? Or to that oh, thing back there. My wife is imagining things, that's all. She's hearing voices. Maria. Paul says she was reciting a black mass. Well, sounded like it. I was probably wrong. I was a worse scholar than I was a priest. It was a man's voice, wasn't it? Yes. Do you know who that was, my dear? In 1407, Lord Canton, the owner of the land on which the abbey stood, your ancestor, was burnt at the stake for heresy and murder. He had worshipped the druid gods, offered human sacrifices, members of your own family. And now, the old ones, well, so you're the what they want. You're the sacrifice they demand. <laughs> Maybe she's right. What else can it be? Everything's gone crazy. You know all about these things. You were a priest, weren't you? What can we do? <laughs> you don't want a priest, Mr. Filer. You want a parachute. <laughs> don't you laugh at me. You lousy drunk. What good are you anyway? The sacrifice. The child. Where's the child? You going crazy? No. No, please. Perhaps we could offer it this. You mean like voodoo? You want to offer the doll instead of. My God, that's hideous. We need to dress it. We'll need something of Mrs. O'Neill's. You can't do this. You stay out of it. But I understand what's happening here. I'm the only one that does. I'm warning you, it won't work. You'll only make things worse. It will work. It's worth trying. Anything is. Is this yours? Wait a minute, you leave my wife's thing. No, no. Alan, don't. You got us into this. You brought that thing aboard. Now stay out of it or you'll get hurt. I got a lot of folly on that. Yes, we'll do. We 
need something more. You know. Tell us! Or are you too good, too holy for this? Too holy? My dear Manya, you of all people should know better than that. some of her hair. No, mister. No, Alan, let them. It doesn't matter. Let them? It doesn't matter. And some of your fingernails. Annalie, hold these. Take another painkiller. Might as well. No use saving them. I know what you're thinking, but what could I do? She wouldn't let me help. Mr. O'Neill, I would never dream of sitting in judgment on another. them down there. 
charming bunch of people. I think that thing only wants me. They'll believe anything now that offers them the barest hope of survival. And they'll do anything, no matter how stupid or bestial. Homo sapien in all his glory. Do you really hate yourself that much? <laughs> I always wait for that. The defrocked priest, delight of the armchair analyst. Where did you lose your faith? I didn't. It lost me. <laughs> I'm frightened. Can you help me? I'm sorry. I'm fresh out. Aren't you afraid? Of dying? I gave that up along with the rest of my illusions. I don't understand you. Those are only words. Words, yes. We talk a lot in the church. It keeps us from asking why we can't have one sign, one tiny, infinitesimal sign to sustain us in the darkness. To touch, to see. Father. Don't look to me. I have nothing. I have no help. is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, William Shatner in this film reminds me of his uh, Twilight Zone episode when he was uh, looking out the exactly, window at yeah. the gremlin, yeah, that's breaking up the plane. Occurred to me, too. But now he's dealing dealing with Satan himself. I love that. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what it's like flying nowadays. Commercial? It is. No, it's like you're flying, flying on Satan air. Yeah. Right, and these demons are serving you like... Yeah, they're the TSA people. Right, right. Those are the demons. Acting in television commercials for fun and profit. Mm -hmm. It was the first book written on acting in television commercials, specifically. Written by this bloke. Have a master's in theater. That came out, I wrote that in 1980. That was when it was first published so by Random 40, House. 40 what? 40 it's in fourth edition and... My goodness. Any one of a number of printings, but 100,000 copies sold. Um... So buy a copy. I make 26 cents. Thank you very much. Well, that's wonderful. No, no, no. But I'm wondering if there's somebody famous who read your book. I get, I get notes and internet is so interesting, but right. I get letters and notes from people that say, I read your book and, and I've, I've got my first commercial and now I've done 30 and whatever. And I always say, that's, that's great. You give me credit. Oh, Send me 10%. That would be fine. Send me 10%. That's maybe what you should have done was become an agent, right? No. No, you, no. you got into better no. things and stuff. But it was good. It was really serving a purpose more than anything else. My background's teaching. I taught high school, uh, college, uh, in acting. I have a master's in theater. And, uh, it wa and I couldn't do that anymore when I started acting full time. And I was teaching high school in right. Pico Rivera, California. I don't know where this is. Uh, it's in East L.A. East L.A., all right. Yes. And uh, lo and behold, um, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't teach. And it's my first love. And so I thought, well, what can I do to fill, help fill that void 
and make me not quite feel as guilty about teaching school. But teaching Write school doesn't pay very well. Right. And uh, so I opted for money. And so I wrote uh, the book about it. And it's How been wonderful. used as a textbook in colleges and universities. And it's, it's wonderful. It's all kinds of information. There's I'll leave that copy you. for you. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I mean, an entirely new career. You know, I should start doing commercials. Entirely I mean, I could be the next career. Ronald McDonald. Right, look at this face. You know, I'd make a good clown, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I should I'd, do the Toyota. Yeah, Toyota. I can jump. Sometimes. Now, you know who'd be a good spokesman for uh, McDonald's would be a Tangela. Ah. No, you're going to meet her soon, Tangela. She's trouble, but she can sell burgers. And she's got a McDog, too. She's got a McDog, yes. A Ronald does. McDoggled. All right, all right. Well, fantastic. What do you say we wrap up this film? Good. And find out more about your winery and what you're doing next when we, we come find back. Find out what happened to William Shatner. That's right. Edge uh, of my chair. Edge of all our chairs. We'll be back after the uh, end of the film. Do not go away after the credits roll because you know what it means. We're going to be back here. Tangela's going to be sitting here. And if you're not here, what are we going to do? If you're not here, you'll have bad luck the rest of your life. There you go. Off we go. See you soon. It didn't work. Nothing will. You have to go down there. You have no choice. Why? Why? Because it's you that they want. You're afraid of them. The old ones. Because you think of them as evil. But you're wrong. They're spirits of nature. The force that holds this plane is as old as the world itself. And aren't you a part of nature? You are as much from the earth as the sacred stones below. Why should you fear something that is natural and irresistible? <laughs> you hear that, Sheila? There's no problem. You're a tree, a rock. How simple it is. And those feelings you have in your gut. Love, fear, all nothing more than the stirrings of atoms and molecules. What a pathetic excuse you are for a man. How do you set yourself above anything? You who betrayed your own pitiful faith. Pitiful, Mrs. Pender, and what are you selling? Powers that are old when this universe was young. Powers that you no more can withstand than an ignorant savage. A fire, Mrs. Pender, is that it? No. The way the ancients held off the demons on Midsummer's Eve, they built a bonfire on the highest hill. We're at 20 or 30,000. That ought to be high enough. And then those poor, ignorant savages would huddle around the light and smoke and pray for the dawn. At the first shaft of sunlight, demons go back to hell or wherever it is they come from. Yes, a fire. A fire for the burning of witches. A fire. Will fire work? Ask her. You fool. You've given them hope for nothing. We've got to make a fire. Burn the plane to save it. Get those ventilators up. I asked you, when is the sunrise? 
342 out here. I wouldn't count on seeing it. Well, maybe we could climb to meet it. Catch it early as it comes over the rim of the world. Now, what is this rim of the world jazz? We climb, we burn more fuel. Bernie, if there's any chance at all, we ought to try it. Going to full power. Come on downstairs, you've got to help. What? Come on. The pillars. Get those pillars. There's more liquor upstairs. Get it. Paper. Over there. Savages. Yes, frightened savages. Waiting to be led. And they will be led. In the darkness, horror, and delight. Be my guest. Would that I had that strength of purpose. But I have only words, and they are far beyond that now. <laughs> There's nothing more we can do. You want to know what's going to happen to you? Just look in there. There's one more thing. It's down to this. One life against how many? All of us. The doll worked. The fire worked. It just wasn't enough. Get back. Get back! The fire! The fire is going out! You gotta go back there. You gotta do it for the rest of us. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned.
Jeez. safe to breathe. You can take your masks off now. Sorry. <laughs> Cornwall Center, AOA 19 X ray. Please give us priority clearance for emergency landing with full standby. Roger, AOA 19 X ray. Do you want clearance for instrument landing? Negative, Cornwall. Negative. No instruments. I don't understand. 
why did he do it? For those people. You talked to him last. Why? Perhaps somehow it was a final act of faith. If there are devils, there must also be gods. I don't know. I have no thoughts. And so ends the horror at 37,000 feet. You know, I love that shot of Shatner flying out the way. It's such a bad special effects, but it's so good that it's bad, or it's so bad that it's good. One of the two. Did you like the film? And he came back to do Boston Legal and all those other things. Well, Hard to believe. Point. Right. No, he was great in that film. He was great. He was great in that film. Anyways, Squire, so you've got a vineyard, Glen yeah. Lyon. Glen Lyon. And you make wine. We do. We've been doing that for 35 harvests. Tell me, do you have any fresh wine? Uh, fresh. Uh, right. No, I, I, go, I go to the market every day looking for fresh wine, and all I find is stale date 1995, stale date 2000. That's too old. I'll go to Whites and Rosé, and they're probably pretty fresh. Pretty fresh? Yeah, right. we so just bought a lot of 22s. I've got to come see you. That's from last harvest. Right, yeah. It's hard to find fresh wine around here. You know, I live in the wine country. You think I could get fresh wine. It's almost impossible. But if you have a friend in the business. So uh, how do we find out more about Glen Lyon? You could go online. Just look. Uh, it's spelled G-L-E-N-L-Y-O-N. It's the historic birthplace of my wife's family from Scotland. Oh, nice. And you've been doing this since uh, Ronald 1985, McDonald. 86. Right. That's when we moved here. How wonderful. That's perfect. So you're going to continue doing that. No more acting for you. No. But no, our daughter took over. She was on Broadway. Oh, she was? Yeah, she did oh, the Pee Wee Herman show on Broadway, Avenue Q. She did the Pee Wee Herman show. Uh-huh. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, Paul Rubens is a great guy. I met him once. No, he's a very nice I did man. not know it was him. He goes, oh, my name's Paul. I mean, oh, nice. He, he really took care of uh, Lexi, our daughter. Right, that's wonderful. But she's very talented. But she's taking over the winery with her husband now. She just had uh, twin girls three weeks ago. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, so my so is this your time. first time being a grandpapa? The second, because second the first time. one was uh, the three-year-old little girl. Right. And right. now we've got two more. Good for you. You don't have time to be Ronald McDonald anymore. You've no. got your hands full. And be well, a it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It was we delightful. Hope to see you again here soon. And uh, if not, you're going to see me find some fresh wine at your vineyard. And uh, thank you again. And I'm really coming. sorry about William Shatner. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. He's, he's in a better place. <laughs> All right, and as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for watching our program. You know, they could have been watching that Pinocchio show. And instead, they stayed with us, which is wonderful. So don't forget, we'll be back uh, next week. Different movie, different guest. We don't know what it is, but it's going to be fun. So uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. And don't forget, we love you. See you next time. Same dog, different guest. That's right. So, uh, Squire, you know, I was wondering, um, you know, You've got some friends at the McDonald Land Company. Maybe uh, you can suggest a, a new character for their show. That is a great idea. They can certainly use that dog. Uh -huh.